Well, thank you again for joining on Side by Side. This is recorded for Wednesday this week, the 20th of January. And it's been a quite a journey for us as we're going slowly into the book of Proverbs. All wisdom comes from God. Now, we were speaking yesterday of wealth and money, but now we get to things with a slightly different perspective on it. Here we read, Blessed is the one who finds wisdom, that's Proverbs 3.13, and the one who gets understanding, for the gain from her is better than sil- the gain from silver, and the profit is better than gold. She's more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honour. And so where we were thinking about honouring the Lord with our wealth, and that tension that exists within our hearts, the idolatrous tension to hold on to it, here we're told that wisdom is actually better than those things, more precious. I'm reminded of the young man who came to Jesus wanting to find the way to heaven, but he was rich. And in his struggle within his soul, he had this battle. He really typifies for us what that's like, doesn't he? What thoughts were going through his mind when Jesus said to him, well, give give what you have away and then come and follow me. Do you think Jesus would have seen him hungry without what he needed? I don't think so. I think Jesus would have graciously provided for him in the most marvelous of ways, in ways that, like the disciples would have discovered, would have created stories to tell their children and grandchildren and to turn their hearts into myriads of joy. No, but he couldn't do it. Then, of course, that reflects and contrasts with Zacchaeus, the, the man who was the, the tax collector that Jesus met on his way out of Jericho. And Zacchaeus climbs up the tree. Of course, you know the story, maybe the sycamore tree. Jesus calls him down and tells him, I'm going to come to your house today. And on that day, Zacchaeus decides, I'm going to give away, give back four times what I took from people that I shouldn't have taken. What a difference is there is there when someone discovers the freedom and the liberty in the wisdom of the gospel and they are transformed and how many lives were not blessed that day. You can just imagine the tax rebate coming through their doors four times what they'd taken. I'm sure that certainly put a, a foundation in the, the gospel ministry and message. And yet, you know, there is a wisdom of the world, a kind of a false wisdom. It's a way of seeing things from a very different perspective, where the values are all mixed up. Maybe you remember that game show. You remember the game show, The Price is Right, where you had to think about what was the right price for all of these various items that you would buy in the shop. And how sometimes people put large prices on things that were of little value and small prices on things that were of great value. Well, that's the wisdom of the world. They put a value on some things that really are not that important at all. I mean, for example, what value does the world put on truth or faithfulness or humility or purity or love or mercy or grace? That's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3 and 19, he says, For the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. Most of what we hear every day through the channels of this media-driven world could be described as impacted by the wisdom of the world. If not entirely the wisdom of the world, they are affected by it. Media opinions from various pundits. And yet think about the weight that is given to those, how people flock day after day, applaud it, and especially on sort of social media, how many likes are given to certain things that actually don't have much wisdom in them at all. I think it's tragic. But listen to this. I, was, I had a friend, one of our reality uh, students, as we'll call them now, they're, they are a wonderful group. They are apologetics course that we run in the church. And uh, they sent me a little YouTube chip clip today. And it's, it's just a few lines from a lady. She is uh, a director of the Foundation of Western, um, I think it's Civilization, that's it. The director of the Foundation of Western Civilization. And she did an audit of the humanities in the top 10 universities in Australia. That's 1,181 subjects. That's humanities, and that's dealing with things like uh, English literature, 
history, political history, all that sort of thing, sociology, anthropology, all those things to do with people, humanity. And she said that instead of things like in English literature, looking at Shakespeare and Milton, some of the real marvellous riches that we have, so much now is actually looking at social, sorry, at, at, at critical race theory and identity politics. Those are the two things that have taken over. In the end, she says, what's happening is that the society is going to be put at each other. So you divide the society into two categories, really. You've got those who are for and against. And that's what we see in America. We see it in the UK and Western Europe. We see it in lots of places. And so the wisdom of those who create these, these various programs is producing a conflict in society that you and I are watching played out on the streets and people are being killed as a consequence of this type of thing. And think about all the many moral decisions of nations. Think of the worth of the unborn. Think of the care of the elderly. Even think about the environment, something that I feel really passionate about too. In so many strange ways, it's been taken in, in another direction. The world rejects the wisdom of God, and we can see that happening all around us. But consider this passage, because it continues on to speak about God's wisdom in the world, in creation. It says, The Lord by wisdom founded the earth, by understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge the deep broke open, and the clouds drop their dew. Wow. The world rejecting the wisdom of God because it rejects the God of wisdom, doesn't it? And such wisdom that created everything. And when this happens, sadly, we're left with a picture and no meaning, if you know what I mean. We can look at the blue planet, or now the perfect planet, which I think is an interesting development. I think it's a good development. But however, it's just great pictures. Because what's the purpose behind it? There is no purpose if there's no God who created it. What we have to do is we've got to find the purpose, give it a purpose, and that purpose is entirely to do with ourselves and nearly the deification of the creation itself. But whenever someone recognises the wisdom of God behind this wonderful creation, then it is a real blessing and it's a worship moment in our lives. You see, without the wisdom of God, we are truly lost. How can we construct, say, a jigsaw with no plan or play a game with no knowledge of the rules? Imagine Monopoly. You find the Monopoly. You've never seen it before. You think it's interesting. There are no rules. This board with this, all these names of these places around the outside and, and little figures and, and, and money type things. And you say, what, what is it? You could begin to play the game. But would it mean anything to you unless you have the authoritative rules given to you? You see, we need God to give us the wisdom in order to understand the purpose. That's why in this passage it says, on two places, verse 13, blessed is the one who finds wisdom. And again, you will find that in verse 18, it brackets that section. Those who hold fast to her are called blessed. Some people think it's great to have the liberty to get rid of God. Well, let's do it ourselves. Let's kill God, as Nietzsche said. But what does that mean? It means we're left with trying to be God ourselves. Well, no human being has this capacity, for we are, every one of us, so limited. Sure, we don't know what a day will bring forth. Look at the decisions of governments in the last year to see how much wisdom or lack of it has been around the pandemic, and how many mistakes, how many forward and back. No, we really need the wisdom of God in order to negotiate our path in this world. And that's why her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her, and those who hold fast to her are called blessed. God's wisdom is found in his word. God's wisdom is found in his son. And as you and I get to know more of his word and more of his son, we will become the people who will be truly wise so I trust you'll experience God's wise blessing and counsel today. And whatever you're in, situation-wise, go searching, for if you seek for it, you will find it. And the Lord bless you, and God willing, we'll catch up tomorrow once again.